Nope, make it close. <laughs> right out of the floor. What is going on, everybody? I'm Jackson. I'm Tristan. And today on the Morning Cup, we are going to be tasting a single origin Ethiopia from Verve Coffee Roasters in Santa Cruz, California. Yeah, and so Verve, like Stumptown, one of the more popular uh, roasters around the world. Um, they started out in Santa Cruz, as Jackson says, but now they have shops all over the world, including Tokyo and San Francisco, LA. Um, yeah, so they're a worldwide, they're doing a lot of good things. They're very innovative when it comes to the coffee world um, and pushing the envelope and not just doing what's expected of them, but doing more. Um, Jackson's gonna talk a little bit more about them, um, but they were founded in 2007 by founders Ryan and Colby. Um, they, like I said, started in Santa Cruz and those two are the head roasters um, and they just had a passion for coffee and wanted to uh, bring it to the world in their own way. Um, so go ahead and talk to them a little about what they- uh, So uh, one of their mantras is from farm level to street level. And on the side of the bag here, um, it talks about uh, their farm level initiative and their ethics and excellence. Uh, and it says the farm level initiative is our direct trade practice. It allows us to reward our farmers for their commitment to pr producing quality coffees with premiums that exceed fair trade minimum every time. No exceptions. By participating in this initiative, you will experience the most incredible coffees in the world while positively impacting global communities with every sip. So when they're talking about fair trade premiums, they're talking about the price set on the coffee um, in the in the fair trade market. And the fair trade market is uh, a push to make sure that farmers are getting fair prices for their coffee and so that no one is getting uh, taken advantage of. And they're committed to paying above the minimums every time when they get coffee, which is pretty great. Uh, that helps uh, farmers thrive and keep doing what they love to do and produce great coffee. Yeah, like I have said um, with Josh and other guests, coffee industry is uh, has a bad reputation in the past, not necessarily right now, but in the past of um, just like any agriculture good in the world, but exploiting the farmers in other countries and really paying them not a lot. And so this initiative helps kind of bring that economic balance around the world. Um, so one cool thing, as you see on the packaging, the packaging is pretty cool, pretty simple made out of a earth friendly material. So it's good for the coffee and the planet. Um, but as you can see um, right here, it's got a diagonal um, indication, which means it is a single origin. If it was a blend, you would see it as a horizontal line. I thought that was pretty cool um, as a quick and easy way to signify uh, at a quick glance, what is single origin? What is a blend? Um, so that's pretty cool to see. It's just a really easy way to take a look at it on the shelf and say, oh, single origin, boom. Yeah. yeah. And um, it says on the side, while our blends are available 365 a year, our single origin coffees are limited and change with the harvest seasons, which is a very, very crucial thing when it comes to coffee, because um, like right now, I believe the co uh, Costa Rican um, harvest season, one of the two is currently ending or about to be over. Um, and you can't get any of Costa Rican coffee, fresh Costa Rican coffee until that's over. And so like, I believe in a couple of months from now, Ethiopia, not exactly sure, but based on the, uh, the climates and just natural cycles, it's, you get different coffees in season all year round. Um, and you only get a couple that are produced so much and have that perfect, um, all year round harvest season, um, yeah. like the Central American. And I think a lot of the times the ones that are um, once a year are honeyed or natural processed coffees. Uh, washed coffees tend to last a little bit longer and they can, they're, they're generally available all year. And I think it's because there's just by and large more washed coffee because it's the most popular way to process the beans. Sweet. So this was roasted on June 3. So it's about a month old. 
Um, let's get some dry sniffs. I'm gonna get some wet sniffs in. Hmm, very vegetal in my opinion. Get some black licorice. Some black licorice. Yeah, you know, I get some spice in there. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Maybe anise, not black licorice. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely giving me more of a fall vibe. Earthy. Yeah. I'm gonna pour it. Not really fruity at all. Just not what I'm getting. Um, I've looked at the flavors. Um, we're gonna see a blind taste what, test. What, tr what Tristan um, tastes. Let me get some of those dry sniffs. Oops. Mm, this is very earthy, yes. Smells great. I get some fruitiness. Um, yeah, let's get the first sip in. Mm. Oh, yeah, so this is the fruit that I would say it's more like because it is a little bit fruitier. Um, I think it's a little bit more tomatoier. Mm. Um, so we're looking at the more vegetal side. It is juicy. Yeah, so it's it's definitely not a berry fruit or like a a sweet berry fruit. Um, it's not like apples or oranges or anything like that. I kind of get a peach or an apricot. I'm getting a stone fruit, but not that like super sweet one. It's I'm gonna go with apricot. It's a little. It's not as um, sweet as a peach. I get but, that. I can see that. Yeah. Um, it is very juicy. I've noticed that a lot of times with Ethiopians. Um, they tend to be a little bit juicier. Maybe some lime flavors. Mm. Uh, hmm. There is that, that spice kind of flavor. Yeah, so what do, you, what do you think? I'm going with jasmine. Jasmine. Jasmine, okay. jasmine, apricot, and lime are my three. I don't think I'm right, but let's double check. What is it, Jack? All right, so this is Ethiopia, Duromina. Mm. I see the first one, cranberry, lilac, and then I'm guessing soft just means like it's not a heavy. Um, it is very light. Uh, you know, very dominating clean. coffee. The lilac, you were lilac, jasmine, same. I would say same like flavor realm, like not necessarily like the same, but close. That, that a flowery, flower. you know, it's just a different flower. Now, I, now that I see cranberry, yes. this is definitely a cranberry uh, flavor. Yeah, um, but I could see it being apricot if you yeah. didn't see the the cranberry. It's just a little bit more heavier than an apricot. Or apricot. And just ever so slightly tart. Yes. Yep. And it is a very soft feeling, like it describes. It's not heavy. Like, no. I mean, there's it's clean. Um, I'm wondering if it's a washed. Like, the only way I can really describe that, not in coffee terms, would be like um, kind of like a light beer versus a heavy beer. Like, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm going to put the it in. The viscosity a little bit. Yeah. yeah. It's a. It's not super heavy when you drink it. It doesn't, it's not harsh when you drink it. There's not a big upfront pow coffee flavor. Um, so that's gonna be my interpretation of soft. Yeah. Um, so I got, we, we're gonna talk about the scale, uh, one, to, one to 10, no sevens with uh, sniffs, taste, and uh, I don't really remember the other one. Oh. Drinkability. Um, so start off with uh, the smell. I wasn't wow. It smells really great. It smells like good coffee, but yeah. it's not like whoa. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead, and this is no indicator of quality, quality or anything. A six. If I could give it a seven, I would. It is a seven. It's very good, but it, I have to give it a six because it's, it's not an eight. It's not an eight. And smell. What do you think? Yeah, I was gonna say six or six point five. 
Like it's a good smell. I like it. 6.5, I like it. It smells a little kind of chocolatey, mm -hmm. uh, but you get no chocolatey flavor. No. It's just kind of that like cranberry smell. really does come out. It, it, I even get that. Yeah. It's a, it, that it, dryness. It yeah. Yeah. It, which is really good. Um, so yeah, I'm going to give it a 6.5. Six, 6.5. Five. Six, five. You know what? I, I like that because it's more than a 6. 6.5 six, for me as well. Yeah. So moving on to taste. Um, I'll go ahead. Um, wow, this this uh, does have like a little bit more of a yellowy, lighter red uh, um, look Fish, to it. Yeah. Um, now, George said that we should describe that a little bit more. Um, we forgot to show it on the glass so you can see it better. But so what, I, what I'm gathering is the Ethiopians, um, they're going to have more of a red tint to it where you're going to look at your Central American, South Americans. You're gonna have more of brown. A brown. Oh, there was some in there. Some in here. You couldn't see it, but I'll hold it up. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see it well. Nope, there it goes. <laughs> right out of the floor. <laughs> yeah, so um it's a little bit more of a greener red. But I like it. It's cool, it's different. Um yeah, it's not it's not that dark brown that you're used yeah. to when you're getting the, your normal coffee. Um, but back to the uh, the taste, the taste I'm gonna give it an eight. Um, very good, very clean, very easy and to sip eight. on. And in the summer, you can drink it hot. Um, that's I think that's a, a good quality for a lot of Ethiopians is they're light, they're soft, and they're very drinkable hot in the summer. And I know there's a lot of people that love to, still love to drink hot coffee in the summer. I drink hot coffee mm -hmm. in the summer. Um, so. Ethiopian, if you want a good summer hot coffee, I would go with an Ethiopia because they are light. They're not heavy and they're very drinkable. They're typically fruity too, so it's a little refreshing, yeah. juicy. Um, so it's going to be a refreshing cup of coffee. And I'm also going to give it an eight. Boom. Um, so the best way I can describe what we're talking about is that it's drinkable in the summer when hot is like when in the summer you want a nice refreshing lemonade opposed in the winter and um, fall, you want that like hot cider, hot cocoa, the little bit more heavier taste, you know, that, yeah. that warmth. This is that lemonade, that nice refreshing when I taste it. It's like, a, it's like a hot lemonade. Yeah. If you will. It really does have that cranberry flavor to it. It's actually, uh, I would say normally when I taste these, I don't necessarily find exactly what the roasters describe it as all the time, but this is dead on. It's got that cranberry juiciness and a little bit of the bitter and what they describe as lilac and what I said as jasmine. It definitely has that floral taste to it and it's really a fresh floral taste. Yeah. And it's really, it, which creates that lighterness, you know, the cranberries can get a little bit heavy. That lilac balances, it, balances out, brings it up a little bit. Um, so eight as well across the board. So we got six, five, eight drinkability. Um, how much was this? How much was that? Let me, they didn't have it on their website, but let me double check. Um, of course, drinkability, we're talking about a lot of different things. It's, it's kind of sometimes hard to decide. It's very subjective. Yes. Cause a coffee could be an eight, but if it was $25 a bag, to me, that's a little bit lower on the drinkability scale because it was only an eight, but it's expensive. Yeah. Um, so I think they no longer carry it. Um, it's probably out of season. Uh, what are some of their other single origins? So what they have in the same bag, single origin um, from Ethiopia, the Guji Highland Natural, Ooh, Guji. Um, which is Guji ripe baby. strawberry, sw sweet cream and pine. That sounds delicious. I'm going to go, that's probably pretty similar. Uh, it's 1975 for a 12 ounce bag. Well, Ethiopia's 21. Yeah. So, I mean, between 20, 22 and night and 22 and 20, let's go with 20 pounds, yeah. right? Or $20, 21 pounds, 20, $21 for 12 ounces. Mm. Um, that's so this is the subjective part, right? I really, do you agree with what they're trying to do with how they feel their responsibility is to um, 
the farmers and be responsible to the earth. Um, that has always been something we want to do uh, yeah. as much as possible. Cafe Naranjo, that's their whole um, mantra, mantra lifestyle. Um, and it's something that we've really wanted to convey um, through our brand. So I really enjoy that. So adding that into the drinkability, honestly, it's a nine. This coffee is really easy to drink. Um, I'm okay paying 20 bucks for this. Um, well, also, when you know why you're paying more. Yeah. Uh, that's it, it makes it easier to pay more. Uh, they're responsibly sourcing it. They're making sure the farmers get paid more than the minimum, which doesn't everybody want to make more than the minimum? Yeah. Like realistically. And so, uh, and it's, you know, skilled labor. Like it's, it's not easy to grow coffee. Yeah. Uh, so I'm also going to, I agree with the nine. Every, you know, you said it's subjective. Like I, I agree with the mission of the company. E Eco-friendly bags, those cost more too. Like it, it all costs more money. So it's going to cost more for the consumer and I'm okay with that. So I'm giving it a nine. Yeah. So we agreed across the board on all three. We promise you not staged. This is true, raw, uncut. <laughs> um, so we're not, we're not just trying to make it easy. 24 out of 30. That is a 0.8. So eight out of 10 on the scale. Yeah, 10, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. What really held it down was the sniffs. No problem there though. Um, I just didn't blow, you know, knock my socks off. Yeah, I, I couldn't give it a seven or else I would have. Yeah. So I, I didn't feel like it was an eight, but that's not knocking, like I've said before. Was it yeah. knocking the quality? Was it knocking? How Obviously it not. It, it, it tasted great, and we, I mean, you got to get out of town. It's just the sniffs were just okay. Yeah, this is a great cup of coffee. I would suggest if you ever see Verve um, in the stores, get it. Get it. Go to their shop in San um, Santa Cruz, or Tokyo. San Francisco, L.A., Tokyo. Um, try it out. Um, these guys seemingly know what they're talking about. Um, Lee, our good friend, has said the same exact thing about them. So this is this is up there in um, pretty good quality roasters. Um, so go ahead, try that out. Stamp of approval by us. That was the stamp. That was the stamp. Um, a little other things coming at you this upcoming week, next week, next week, the twenty third, the twenty third. Cafe Soul Art ex Exhibition here, 6 to 9 p.m. at Cafe Rico with Giselle and TT. They're yep. both going to be showcasing what they can do live and direct. And direct. So come out, have a good time. Game night was a success. Yes. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. That was great. Had a lot of fun. Yes, it was very fun. Mm -hmm. Super excited to program some things into um, our weekends. Um, I think we're going to do once a month. Um, yeah, that's that's about right. Yeah. Um, just once a month. We don't want to oversaturate it. Uh, don't want to make things stale. We want to keep it fresh. And uh, want to keep us fresh. Yeah, that too. Um, so once a month, look for new programming. And come to Cafe Soul. It's going to be great. Lots of great artwork. DJ Lalog was going to be there. It's going to be a good time. Question of the day. What events are you interested in having here at Cafe Rico? We are open to anything and everything. Yeah. Game night. Art shows. We got live music. Live music. Drag shows. Been approached for a uh, adult book fair. Got a meeting with that. Let us know what you yep. think would be awesome. 0.5K uh, marathon, uh, sorry, 0.5K race, possibly. Tacos and Tune Light, possibly. I don't know. We want to supply some entertainment here in downtown Battle Creek every so often, get the ball rolling. So let us know what you want to see here at the shop. That's all I got. Anything from you? 
That's all. Hope everybody has a good one. Take it easy. Yeah, follow us, like, subscribe. See ya.